A little background. Um, what we've been talking about the last couple of days, I was doing as a psychologist. My background is with Child Protective Services. I've done a lot of work with victims, real victims of physical, sexual abuse. I uh, worked extensively uh, with perpetrators as well. Um, certified in plethysmography. Basically, that means if you can say the word, you get certified in it. Um, but uh, up to 1992, I believed very much in the things we've been discussing and um, uh, felt very uh, confident in the work that I was doing. I came to think differently. And as I watched the results of what was happening in clients' lives, uh, fortunately my good training as a psychologist came to my rescue and allowed me to question what truly is a national disaster. Um, and so I want to I want to share with you a little bit about what we've been doing because in uh, 1993 I organized something called uh, Project Middle Ground in an effort to address uh, the crisis. And so as a retracting therapist, I bring you my perspective. Uh, I will share with you that as I came to understand the truth about this. I had to um, take responsibility for my work and found my clients one by one and brought them in or talked with them to let them know that I really did believe the work we had done was delusional and that they um, had to understand that the traumatic images that they were seeing out of our uh, therapy sessions were not necessarily reflective of anything real. Some were happy and some were not. <laughs> We love our memories, and we love victimhood as well. One of the things I, I want to emphasize, which is getting into regressionism is a step-by-step -step process. Your daughters, your sons did not jump up one day and say, hey, I think I want to have some memories of Satanism and eating babies alive. Okay? They got to that point step-by-step particularly first was inculcated a belief system that pulled them into it. And then once you use trance technique, good night. Um, along those lines, the recovery process from regressionism is also a step-by-step -step process. And I want to be sharing with you a little bit about that. Project Little Ground has been focused on three basic areas, education, professional mediation, and finally restoration. Education, for the last two years, we've been going out and uh, doing uh, one day seminars on false memory syndrome to you name it, churches, uh, psychiatric hospitals, colleges, Christian colleges, uh, FMS state groups, whatnot. What's our goal? One is, if you can get there first, you can educate people before they get into all this stuff. So we have a chance to be proactive. Now as of yet, um, I, I don't know if there's other teams going out and doing this. Uh, Eric Nelson, who is an extremely competent uh, researcher, presenter, we go out as a team to whoever is inviting us and we uh, uh, put on our one day dog and pony show. Uh, for instance, a couple weeks ago, I uh, went out to a very large church in Colorado Springs, uh, over 5,000 members. They have their own counseling center that is a part of the church with therapists. They've been doing a ton of regression work in the name of God. They brought us out. We had a great time. We brought in a retractor. She shared her story Friday night. Saturday, we went to town. Um, educating. Now, I've got to share this. Later, later on, you're going to meet the younger brother I never had. Skip Simpson is, uh, is going to show you his charm and finesse. Um, we regularly play a 16-minute uh, uh, tape of uh, Skip talking to the Dallas uh, conference in, um, in which he shares his attitude with them. Um, and uh, 
sort of a sort of interesting result. We had, because of the size of the church, we had TV screens about this big, three of them, set up in, in the church, you know. And Skip proceeded to share with this audience uh, via tape his attitude, and he talked about uh, a dump truck full of my money. And he talked about uh, how he has a bad attitude and what he's going to do to my little rear end. Now, those of you who don't know, Skip's an attorney. He's a scary attorney, which is good. If I were going to be an attorney, I'd probably want to be a scary one. Well, you might say that the doubters in the crowd, particularly the regression therapists, had a religious experience. They saw what looks like God on 12-foot screens in their face, angry, talking about dump trucks and F-15s coming at them full blast, guns blazing. Whee! It was fun. Uh, so, what happened? Got the word back. Uh, we left uh, Sunday. Got word back um, on Tuesday of that week. The pastor, now this is a church that was engaged big time in regressionism. The pastor had ordered every book on regression out of the church. They were no longer allowed to recommend any of that. All hypnosis, all memory work was to cease. They even let go of one of the therapists who was doing the primary work. What's the point? We're making a difference. And part of that difference is we're educating people to what is going on. And it's working. Um, last month I went to a two-day conference, invited to speak on FMS. And uh, it was predominantly high school educated, maybe up to master's educated therapists. And uh, they uh, had me come in and do this, this portion. The next sessions also included uh, special training on how to manipulate your client's aura. Okay. Or the use of I Ching in counseling and therapeutic settings. This was as about as bizarre a, a conference as I, I've seen. They were real pleased with what I had to share with them. What's important, and you need to hear this is, we're taking the message to where it needs to be heard. And I had a chance to share with the I Chingers and the aura manipulators how and why they're going to get sued. And on what counts, they're going to find themselves flipping burgers in another life. We've organized in Arizona a six-member uh, psychologist task force, and we're looking to create state policy for psychologists, ultimately for master's level therapists as well, on uh, what are the guidelines and recommendations regarding false memory and regression work. It's very important to understand that within that six-member task force, the entire spectrum is represented. We have one of the psychologists who um, uh, takes clients back to prior lives. Okay? Now, what you need to hear is, we're on the board, we're on the task force. And part of where this begins is getting the dialogue going and taking it to where the battle is. So we have a chance now to influence and to bring a healthy perspective of false memory issues into a task force that otherwise would have been extremely, extremely lopsided. They don't like me, but I've learned to live with it. In the meantime, uh, what, are we, what we're seeing from the educational part of what Project Middle Ground has been doing is, one, we're getting to people before the regressionists get to them. Secondly, for those involved in it, whether as therapists or as people who've been clients in regressionism, we're allowing them permission to doubt. We're allowing them permission to doubt the images that they see in their mind. That's extremely important when you understand the process of what regression, uh, what uh, retractors have been going through. Giving them permission to say, hey, 
maybe these aren't real after all. So in that sense, the educational portion of what we're doing, the, uh, the books that you see published, um, Victims of Memory, uh, other excellent books that are out there, uh, Offshoes Work and Lattices, these are incredibly important, not only from the, from the perspective of uh, preventative and of giving out good education, but for those caught up in regressionism, it allows them permission to think something else, to question. Now, uh, in regards to mediation, one of the things I went ahead, uh, I'm certified as a mediator as well as licensed as a psychologist, because I believe it holds the key, one of the most important keys, to reaching out to people who are deeply embedded in regressionism. What we've been doing is, uh, and that was the primary focus back in 93 on um, Project Middle Ground, is going in, not deciding who's right, who's wrong, not getting all involved in the memories, but simply providing a safe place, a safe place where accusing children could sit down with the accused family members and talk. Talk. What a concept. What an absolutely radical concept. And so what we've been able to do is provide some neutral territory. Both parties agree who can be in the room. Sometimes we have the therapist. Sometimes we have uh, an extended family member, a pastor, the family dog, you name it. I don't care. What's important is we're getting the parties in conflict to sit down with one another. We agree to disagree on the memory portion because we're going to get nowhere really quick if we focus on that. So what we talk about is putting this portion aside, is there a relationship to be had here? Is there some terms that the two sides can reach in having some kind of relationship in the future? And what we're finding is, yes. When we can get the two parties together, they're able to talk about very basic things like, dad's my perpetrator, but I'm willing to talk with mom. And I'm willing to start letters with her. Or, my siblings have nothing to do with, with any of this. I'm willing to allow them to, to not confirm my abuse, but we can have discussions anyway. Basic things like supervise, uh, supervised visitation that the grandparents can have with their grandchildren. What can they do in in, uh, if an emergency comes up, etc.? This is very important because it's helping to break the absolute isolation, the absolute silence that's existed for families. Mediation is not therapy. I don't want to hear about your potty training. I don't want to talk about that. I want to look into symbolic meanings when we are doing mediation. Mediation is not therapy. It's not figuring out who's right and wrong. It's not a legal process. Mediation is helping parties in conflict talk. So we've had some success. And, and actually more success than I would have predicted back in 93. If we can get the daughter to um, uh, find and agree to some neutral place, we're making some good strides forward. Now, moving beyond that, and these are not necessarily uh, stages here. Mediation goes as far as I've described. I tell folks it's not my indication or uh, intention to have you believe your memories are false. It's not my intention to have your parents confess, et cetera, et cetera. It's pretty straightforward. Um, however, as we have been doing research and, uh, and work with uh, retractors, people coming out of regressionism, a whole other aspect of Project Middle Ground has been developed, which is providing what's called exit counseling for returnees or retractors. You saw some very important things described uh, by Donna, by her family, that we're regularly engaging with, uh, with the families who are trying to figure out a way to come back together. Now, what is that work all about? First of all, uh, Linda Ross. Linda, would you stand for just a second? She's 
in the back. Linda Ross is also a retracting therapist. Thanks, Linda. Who was into this quite deeply and got out. So now we run uh, the restoration part of it together, sometimes tag teaming, uh, uh, doing joint sessions. What are we doing, first of all, with uh, the retractors? We're providing basic exit counseling, helping them to understand their um, uh, false memory experience, what happened to them in therapy. Now, uh, and part of that includes manipulation. I'll sit down with them, and our first session I'll tell them, don't trust me. Don't trust me. Trust yourself. Don't trust me. Don't close your eyes. I don't want to marry you in therapy. We're going to take a look at what needs to be addressed, and then we're going to be done. Now, let, let's have a little bit of fun here. It's not a statistic, but you know, it'll make do. Well, I want you just not to, this is a hypnosis, mind you, but I want you just to sort of let yourself relax a little bit. I'm going to ask you a few questions. What I want you to do is go ahead, please, and write down the first answer that comes to your mind. Y'all set for this? Festus and he's back there probably somewhere going, I don't trust this guy. He's a psychologist. <laughs> a good place to begin. All right, so let, let's try this out. First thing that comes to your mind, I want you to think of a number between 1 and 50. Hang on a second. 1 and 50. Make uh, both the digits of that number odd, odd numbers, and um, don't repeat the same number. So you all with me? Think of a number between 1 and 50 that's odd numbers, both the digits, and don't repeat the same number. So write down the first thing that came to mind. People are going, he's flipped out. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's, he's. All right, all right. How about a number between 50 and 100? But this time, make both of the digits even numbers, and the same thing. Don't write down the, you know, the same digit in a row. So between 50 and 100, and uh, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, make them even numbers without repeating. Got it? How about a number between 1 and 5? First number that comes to mind. 1 and 5. A flower. How about a wild animal? An uh, article of furniture. Uh, let's see. A uh, vegetable. Got it? First thing that came to mind. Now, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Dr. Simpson, and I'm an expert in pink elephant trauma. You didn't know that, did you? I've got a best-selling book. See, I believe that millions of people have been traumatized by pink elephants, but they just don't remember it. See, because once you're traumatized, you can no longer see the pink elephants that are all around us. Now, you believe me. I am an expert. All right, well, let's try it out. See, because I have a symptoms list. Symptoms list it helps you to know if you've been secretly traumatized by pink elephants but simply can't remember. And you just took my symptoms list test. So let's see how I did. Fair enough? Okay, now I'm not looking for hits on all of them. I'm just looking for a few. So let's try it. On that first question, who, who put down uh, 35 or 37? Raise your hands. I could retire. <laughs> who, who has good insurance in here? <laughs> oh, let's see. How about uh, on that second one? Who put down the number 68? How about on uh, this other one? Uh, who put the number 3? Raise your hand. <laughs> hey, I'm doing good, huh? You didn't know manipulation could be fun. Uh, for the flower, who put those? 
you got it's like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> Slow moving fish in a barrel. Uh, who put the color red? Oh, I didn't. Oh, I had a false memory. Now, who would have put the color red? <laughs> who put down uh, for a wild animal a, a lion? How about an article of furniture, chair or a couch? Uh, and vegetable, carrot. Is there a point to any of this? All right. Now let's say you took my little pink elephant test. How many people did I get, let's say, four or five of them young? Okay, all right. Now, I've developed a belief system. I've helped you to start on the first step in your deception. Now, where we're gonna go from there is I'm gonna say, hey, Festus, I want you to go home and read my special book on Pink Elephant Trump, okay? And come on in next week and we'll talk a little bit more just some of the symptoms, I'm not sure, but we'll find out. Now, I guarantee you, when Festus goes home, during the weekend, he eagerly reads through the Pink Elephant trauma book. You know what's going to happen? He's going to dream about pink elephants during the week. I guarantee it. I'll lay money on that. He will dream about pink elephants. It has everything to do with daily residue and how dream work is structured off of the day's issues. Now, when he comes in next week, he's going to sit down in front of me, and I'm going to say, Festus, tell me something. Did you have any dreams this week? And Festus is going to go, golly! <laughs> Did I have dreams? Pink elephants, huge ones, hairy, with tails. They're all over me. Festus, that wasn't a dream. That was a flashback. It's real. And only now that you're in my company and safe is your unconscious mind allowing you to remember your pink elephant trauma. This really confirms my initial concerns. And so as a part of our therapy, we need to do and fill in the blank. Holy Spirit regression, hypnosis, imagery, uh, uh, hypnotic writing techniques, sodium amytal, sodium brontal, it doesn't matter. What Festus is going to have experienced is a loss of control in that trance state. And once Festus goes under, he's gone. And if he's lucky, a few years from now, he'll find his way back to reality. If he's not, he may take his life, he may take all his savings, he may destroy himself in the process as he pursues these delusional images. So what are we doing here? I'm going to share with you a couple of things. How, do, how does that play in? Sue Bloom, best-selling book, Secret Survivors. In our research with the retractors, this is the number one list that was cited as evidence that someone had repressed their memories of abuse. 181 items. You want to hear a few of them? You thought my list was fun? Listen to this one and see how many might apply to you. Fear of the dark, nightmares, poor body image, spontaneous vaginal infections, headaches, arthritis, wearing a lot of clothing, requiring privacy when using the bathroom. <laughs> now, call me approved. I don't know. Drug use, uh, no drug use. Um, <laughs> perfectionism, non-perfectionism. Constant anger, lack of anger. High risk taking, inability to take risks. Trusting too much or not trusting enough. Low self-esteem, worthlessness, doing what others want. Abandonment. Uh, you feel real or unreal. It goes on and on and on. People who read these lists and told they had all the symptoms that pointed to abuse. 
she tells us that the incest survivors after effects checklist is not complete it never will be the short version of this is are you alive and breathing <laughs> but for vulnerable people it passes as science it is a lie restoration what we've been doing is getting with the retractors, helping them to understand how they got manipulated. We're doing an original uh, uh, diagnosis, looking for what brought them into therapy originally. Uh, so helping them have a good on-target diagnostic workup. Um, when we bring in the family members, what we've been doing is helping everybody sit down and truly restore to one another, which is to talk about who got hurt, how, in the middle of the false memory crisis. As a part of our work, we have a specific uh, forgiveness exercise where family members are able to look at one another and talk about the false memory crisis. I've hurt you in this way, and in this way, and in this way, and I'm asking forgiveness. And so we work on a conscious, verbalized forgiveness for what happened in the middle of this horror. It goes a long way in helping retractors to let go of the shame and the confusion that they feel from what they did. We've also been incorporating what's called the blessing. If those of you know uh, John Trent and Gary Smalley's work, um, it's something that as we've been doing it, we've found that it's really important, particularly from the father, that the daughter receives the blessing of her father. And so he just, it's an exercise that we do where he just communicates you're acceptable and I love you. Let's get on with life. Okay, um, what are we looking for in the future? We're continuing research, uh, particularly in the area of fantasy proneness. We're uh, incorporating as a nonprofit to help us to, to get out and do more of this work, uh, planning restoration weekends for more, uh, four to five families, uh, helping them to reconcile. We're looking to train professional mediators who can go out around the country and continue this work. We're particularly targeting churches. They seem to be very uh, untouched at this point. So we're trying to get into that particular population, help them to understand the crisis that is at hand. Um, for those of you who do want to know more, we have uh, some brochures, and we're glad to share those with you. It is my privilege to do the work with the families, with the retractors, one life at a time, one family at a time, one church, one nation at a time, we will together bring this to a close, and it will happen. Thank you.